as indie artists, we're forced to wear a million different hats. We're forced to take care of everything from recording our music, marketing, content creation. There is just way too much on our plates. So today I'm gonna share the love and show you the tool that I've been using to distribute my music across some of the biggest streaming platforms and social media networks, all without breaking the bank or giving up any of your rights to your music. In the past, I've used a ton of different distribution services to release my music. For those of you who may not know, a distributor is sort of like a middleman between you and music marketplaces, like Apple Music or Spotify. Traditionally, or like back in the day, 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 you would use a distributor to get your music into physical stores that sold albums and CDs and cassettes. But because those aren't selling like hotcakes anymore, most of the popular distributors focus on digital streaming services like Tidal, Pandora, Amazon, among other places and things. But with all that being said, today we're gonna focus on DistroKid. I use it for every single one of my releases and I have found it to be the most simple, affordable, and effective way to release your music into the World Wide Web. So here's a quick rundown on some of the features that keep me coming back to DistroKid for every release. The cost, it's $19.99 per year for unlimited releases. You pay $19.99 one time and you can release thousands of songs if you wanted to. If you wanted to sit down and write a thousand song album, you could release all of them for $20. On DistroKid, that is pretty awesome and cost effective. You get to keep 100% of your profits, which is definitely a beautiful thing. Some of your favorite artists release their music and have to split their revenue with their record labels. You just get to cruise on into DistroKid, upload your music to the same marketplaces they're releasing on, and make 100% of the profits and you get to keep all your rights. So congratulations to you and all of your decision making. Cover song clearance. This is big, especially if you make a lot of YouTube videos singing covers of some of your favorite songs. There is a thing called copyright infringement and you probably most likely can get sued. <gasps> DistroKid will procure the licenses you need to legally release a cover. It will also make sure that their portion of the revenue goes where it's supposed to go. You don't even have to pull all those strings. So that's just one thing off your back when you decide to do a cool cover of something. Because let's face it, we're musicians. We just wanna make the music and not think about all the complicated stuff. So yeah, payment splits. This is one of my favorite features that they offer because realistically, we don't, most of us don't work alone. We have producers, we have additional songwriters. Sometimes you have instrument players that might have played an integral part of the song, so now you're giving them a percentage of the profit. Whatever it may be, DistroKid's system allows you to enter in all the players of the team, the credits, and the percentages that should be allocated to those people. And as the profits for the song come in, DistroKid pays out their share of the profits. You don't have to do anything and it's, it's all taken care of. So once you've uploaded your song, it's scheduled and ready for release, it automatically generates a page with all the links to your song so that your listeners can choose the correct link for the streaming service they use. That is amazing. I use it on my website and my Instagram. Another feature I find useful and I use for pretty much all of my releases is the Leave a Legacy add-on. It basically just means they will never take your song out of the store, no matter what happens. If your card gets declined um, or if you cancel your account, you are good to go forever. So I could literally go on for a lifetime <laughs> with all the benefits and reasons you should probably be using DistroKid. But for now, let's talk about what you're gonna need before you start uploading to DistroKid. So before you log on to DistroKid, make sure you have cover art. Professional, beautiful, 
cover art. They say the dimensions of your cover art can be as small as 1,000 by 1,000, but they recommend 3,000 by 3,000. So you guessed it. I always do 3,000 by 3,000. And they also have other rules and regulations that you might wanna take a glance at because your cover art can be rejected from these marketplaces. The next thing you might wanna keep in mind before you upload is your actual release date. I know they recommend if you want your song to come out on a special day to upload it or schedule it at least four weeks in advance so that all the stores have time to process your release and get them onto their store. But who are we kidding? I've definitely released songs that I wanted out the next day and they got it out pretty quickly. It might not be on all of the streaming platforms, but at least like a few of them. But once again, I would dive into their frequently asked questions section to really see what they say their turnaround times are, but they're pretty quick. Make sure you collect the names and email address addresses of the people you're collaborating with. And also make sure you guys have confirmed the splits. If you don't know what splits are, it's basically just a cute way of saying, we agree that you own 50% and I own 50%. So that is the split. We're splitting at 50-50. Sometimes it's simple and sometimes it's not. You might want to discuss that before you start uploading because you don't want anybody feeling a type of way when they see their percentage isn't what they expected. But that is a whole other video topic. Discuss the splits and have that information ready to share with DistroKids so they can credit and pay everybody appropriately. I also like to have my lyrics ready. They can get your lyrics on Apple Music and Instagram and I think that's pretty cool. So I always have my lyrics ready to just copy and paste right into to DistroKid. So when you first get to DistroKid, if you don't already have an account, this is what you're gonna see. It'll tell you everything I kind of just mentioned earlier about what what special features they have to offer. Also, here's a quick look at the plans that they offer. As I mentioned earlier, $19.99 for a whole entire year and you can upload unlimited songs, unlimited lyrics. You get a Spotify verified check mark and you can collect earnings the way I mentioned earlier and split it up with your team. And if you need some extra features, you can take a look at their Musicians Plus or label plans. It really all comes down to what you think you need. So this is what it looks like once you have some releases under your belt and you're all logged in. So when you get to the upload section, it immediately shows you what services your music will be available on. You can uncheck the ones you don't want your music on, um, and or if for some reason you have a special campaign and you only want it exclusively somewhere specific, you can do that. Um, I choose to put it everywhere that's available because why limit yourself? Yes. So make sure that the music you're uploading in general, that you have the right to actually be releasing or the people that share the rights with you are on board with your decision. So there's no drama later on down the line. That will not be fun. So was this pre previously released? I'm going to say no. I believe this option is in the event you released a single and you also want to put that single on your album, this would be the place that you're like, yes, this is the single, now it's included in the album. But we've never released this, so let's just click no. You put your artist band name, they give you some details on what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Make sure you follow it because you can get rejected from these stores. It connects to your, your artist pages in Spotify and Apple. If there's any issues, they do have something called the fixer that you can work out any issues that may arise later down the line with those marketplaces um select your release date so this one says earlier i said four weeks and i only said that because the last time i did something a week in advance it was like ooh, you're cutting it close so let's say we're releasing august 27th release time i usually just stick to midnight you know nothing too stressful and I think it's cool to do it in the listeners time zone um, but if you're planning like a live stream or something and you want everybody to get it at the same time you could select midnight in New York simultaneously all other countries at the same time pre-order this is great marketing for marketing and promotion if you want to hype something up before your release I use this all the time and they make the cool page that I was talking about earlier the pre save page for Spotify pre-order start date is today day as soon as possible put your record label if applicable choose your album cover remember the guidelines that i mentioned earlier this is our cover art it follows the guidelines that i mentioned 3000 by 3000 and there's a bunch of other fine print that it's like don't do anything crazy i didn't i followed the rules 
so let's upload that one the language is english let's say the genre is um r b soul secondary i usually always choose pop that's just me let's put our song title in coast to coast add a collaborator if this is if you had a featured artist or something like that you can put them here you can also put the producer's name or anything like that i typically do this all after the fact just because i like to collect all the information and make sure i have everything right so if you have like a special edited version or like this says radio track bonus track blah 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 you can put that um, information here this is a normal track we're not going to do that um let's upload our song it says they accept everything from waves to mp3s to even m m4 a's i typically just upload waves because that's how i do this is how you can um upload your covers and get the appropriate licenses to sell those songs legally on streaming platforms so this is where you would do it but in this case we're not really doing that so i'm gonna check back i wrote this song it's an original tune um coming back over here so you're gonna put your information and any details of somebody that you co-wrote the song with if that's the case um this is where you verify if there's explicit lyrics or not um you get it you just answer these remaining little details um even down to the track pricing i stick to the store's standard pricing and this section the extras optional but awesome section as they say this is where you can add on any other cool services or features you might need for your current release. Typically, I add Shazam. That means wherever your song is playing, somebody can find it, and that looks so cool and professional. But I typically stick with Leave a Legacy and Shazam. The only reason I don't use YouTube um, Content ID is because I have a separate service that I pay for each year that also includes youtube content id so i don't use that but if i didn't have that service i would also use youtube content id it just basically means if somebody is using your music they will detect it and you will get pizzed if there's money to be paid store maximizer is how your music can be added to any new stores that uh they may add to their service so once you figure out if there's any add-ons or extras you want to use um, you're gonna scroll down and do their little mandatory checklist and then click done and your song will be sent off to the marketplaces and you will be notified when it's official and people can find your song. Next, I wanna show you what happens after you upload your music and send it off to the stores. It automatically generates a hyper follow page for you where all the links that your music is currently available in will be populated and it's pretty convenient to use um, on your social media, for your website, or anywhere else that you may be directing people to your new song. You can also put your social links and all kinds of other things, but typically I use this on my website and all over the place. I love these pages. That about sums it up. That's my two cents on distribution services, specifically focusing on DistroKid. If you are interested in trying it out for yourself, I do have a link that will give you 7% off of one year's membership. So definitely test that out. And like, comment, and subscribe if you're interested in me diving deeper into this topic. Or if anything confused you, I, I will make another video on it. So yeah, until next time, I'm happy.